Hey there, my most amazing artist, Ms. Pelavan here, to show you how to make a Ted Harrison landscape. Um, last time when you came to art, we looked at the artwork of Ted Harrison, and we um, discussed how he always had the sun in his artwork. He, there was a lot of lines that were curvy. They weren't very straight. And um, they were mostly warm and cool colors when we looked at them. So um, today you're going to just get started with the landscape, and then we're going to add some color using watercolor paints. So first I wrote my name, let me flip it back so you can see it, I wrote my name in the corner of my paper on the back and I was just practicing some drawing here so just ignore that. So I flip my paper over, I turn it landscape. If you want to make your paper tall in the portrait style that we talked about, you can also do that but it's up to you. Um, I'm just going to do it this way for example purposes. First thing I'm going to draw is the horizon line, and the horizon line might not be exactly straight, and especially being in Canada and the Yukon, there might be very a lot of mountains and icebergs and things like that. So I'm going to take my pencil, and I'm going to very lightly draw the line for the horizon line. Remember, that's where the sky looks like it touches the ground or the water, or things like that. <clears throat> so I'm going to draw across my paper. I think I'm going to move it up a little bit here. Just very carefully drawing that line. And you might not be able to see it because I'm drawing lightly in case I need to use my eraser. Now under that line is going to be the land, and then above that line is going to be the sky. So um, down where the land is, you're just going to add some lines to make it more interesting, to make it look like Ted Harrison's um, style of artwork. So I'm just going to add some curved lines to make it look like there's bumps in the land. You don't want to add too many because if you do, then it will make your artwork too confusing. Alright, so I made some lines at the bottom. And then at the top where the sky is, remember, he always had the sun. So you can make a whole circle for the sun, or you can make it look like the sun is going down um, behind the land, or you can make it look like it's going off of the paper. So if I did my sun right here in the middle, it might not be as interesting as if my sun were over here in the corner or down here setting. So putting your... Um, object that is att catching attention off to the sides, off center, and making a little bit of asymmetry often makes your artwork more interesting. So I think I'm going to put mine over here. And it doesn't matter what size you make your sun. You can make a small sun, you can make a big sun, you decide. And then you're going to draw some texture lines coming out from the sun make it a little curvy. You could even make some lines coming out from the sun this way, like the sun's rays. You decide. It's your artwork, but I want you to make repeated lines to fill up the space for the sky. And just try to remember where that horizon line is, because you're going to need to put only warm colors in the sky and then only cool colors at the bottom. Now, before we start painting, you're going to use a black crayon to trace over the top of your lines so that it's easier for the paint to stay inside of those spaces. So I don't have to be super duper careful about my colors touching because crayons have what's called wax in them and the wax resists the paint, which means that it does not like to be friends with the paint. It says, get out of here. So I'm just gonna take my black crayon and I'm gonna push down pretty hard and I'm just tracing over top of all of the lines that I drew every single line. And if it goes off of a line, that's okay. It'll still look really nice. And if you want to change part of your line, you can do that too. Okay. Just keeping it simple with a simple landscape. Now I'm going to trace the horizon line. I apologize for my hand being over top of the artwork, but that's where my hand needs to be so I can color. Now I'm going to trace the lines in the foreground, that's the part that's closer to me. <clears throat> Alright, now my lines are all traced and I'm going to put my crayon away. You can tell that those lines really stand out, they have emphasis. And I'm ready to start using the watercolor paint. So I'm moving my paint, my paints closer, opening it, opening it up. Let me turn it around so you can see it a little better. And I have my water bucket here. I'm just going to keep it off camera so you can see my painting a little bit better. 
So when I'm doing this, I want to try and use only warm colors in the sky because remember the sun is hot, so it's going to have warm colors and then the cool colors down in the bottom. But I don't have a whole lot of colors here, so I might have to either mix some on my paper or I might have to add a little bit more water or a little less water to change the colors that I'm using. But I'm trying to put warm in the sky, cool on the land because remember the land is cold up in Canada, up in the Yukon where he's from. So I'm going to start with the cool colors and I'm just going to put water on all my cool colors just to get them ready to paint. Now some of the cool colors you might not want to use, like this yellow green, that might be more for a, cool, a warm color if you decide or you can use it as a cool color. You are the one that's choosing which where the colors go. Um, the same goes with red violet. They're both kind of tricky trying to figure out which group they go in. You decide where they go. It does not matter to me. So I think I'm gonna I'm gonna keep that with the warm colors or I might change my mind. I don't know. No big deal. So I'm gonna start painting. Now when I paint I want to start close to the edge where the black line is and then I'm just going to carefully fill in that space and if my paint is very light like it is right here um, I might need to add a little bit more of the paints and less water to it or I can go back and paint it again once it's dry like put another layer on top of it kind of like a cake so see I just put another layer of green on top of it and the more water you put on your paints the lighter the color will be. So if your colors are turning out very light, that means you have a lot of water and you might need to have less water on them. You'll notice when I dip the second time the color was a little bit darker. And then when your brush starts to dry out that means you need more water because there's no paint on your brush. When you change a color, remember to clean your brush, get another color on there, and um, Try to make a variety of the cool colors. Don't make it all the same. I know a lot of people really like this blue I'm using. They think it's really pretty. They really like it. They like that's their favorite color. I get it. I understand. But your paper is going to be kind of boring if it's all blue. So try to use a variety of blues and a variety of greens to make your picture more interesting. Using a variety of colors uses the principle of art called variety and it makes your artwork more jazzed up, more interesting than if it was just all one color. And also if you create a variety of these colors, um, like some light blue, dark blue, it'll make your artwork more interesting. It'll also make the viewer who's looking at your artwork more interested in your work and they will also be able to look at more parts of it. because they're looking to see what all the colors are. Now I'm doing all the cool colors first and then I'll do the warm colors, but you can decide what you want to do. If you want to put a little bit of warm colors up in the sky so you remember that next time you're going to be painting those colors, you can go ahead and do that. Um, you don't have to, you decide. Now notice how when I get close to that black, my colors aren't mixing together because the black is keeping them separated. That's really important that you have those black lines there because if you don't, then your colors will mix together and then it won't look nice and neat. Notice how I'm not squishing my brush down, I'm keeping the hairs nice and pointy, and I'm making nice long strokes. I'm trying to fill in the space, I'm not going like this that will take forever. Now this will take a long time. You will have enough time to work on it, don't worry. 
there we go the land is all done and now I'm going to do the warm colors for the sky but I'm actually gonna flip the paper over so that I don't bump any parts of the cool colors so it's easier for me to paint close to the bottom because that's easier for me to reach so I'm gonna put some water on all my warm paint just to get them ready to use and notice I didn't use any brown or black or white because we want our artwork to be colorful today. Black and white are colors, but they're not as colorful as the colors we're going to be using. So I'm just stirring up some of my paint, making it ready to go, and then I'm going to get painting. warm colors in the sky because the sun is warm. Cool colors on the ground because the ground is cold in Alaska. Uh, or not in Alaska, in Canada. The part of Canada that Ted Harrison liked to paint was in the Yukon Territory, which was up close to Alaska. That's why I said that. What kind of animals do you think would live up in the Yukon Territory where it's really cold? I'm thinking maybe some foxes that have a lot of fur, probably a lot of bears, maybe some moose. Thinking of some animals that might live up in the Yukon just to pass some time while I'm uh, painting here. Now you'll see right here some of the red got into that red orange and it's starting to mix together. So that's why it's important to stay close to your um, crayon line because you don't want it to go into those other colors. Not that it'll look bad, but if it's next, a warm color mixed with a cool color, that doesn't really mix very well sometimes. Red and blue mix together to make violet, but that's the only exception. Well, and yellow and blue make green. I guess that's not true. Oh well, I make a mistake every once in a while. And if the colors mix together, it's like a little happy accident and might make a new color. But I'm trying to keep my colors separate so they look like stripes in the sky like Ted Harrison made. A little peek of that color in there. Now this is where this yellow green color looks more yellow to me so I'm using it in with the warm colors but you can choose to use it with the cool colors if you want to. You decide. Those colors are a little bit tricky to decide but it's up to the artist to make that choice. And then I think, oh no, I got some in here. I'll have to go back and fix that up. See I got a little excited with my brush. And then my last color, I think I'm going to use this color, which kind of looks a little cool, but it might be because the sun is just coming up or going down. So maybe that's why there's some of that color off to the side. Very good. All right, so now my landscape is complete. I'm going to go back and fix up some of this part over here because I got some yellow there. I can just cover it up a little bit. If it stays there, it's fine. It's not a big deal. I'm not going to worry about it. And we splash every once in a while. So, <clears throat> as you can see, my landscape is finished. I have warm colors in the sky, cool colors on the ground, trying to make a separation between them using that horizon line. When you're all done, your paper goes on the drying rack. You carry it with two hands. Make sure you carry it like your lunch so you don't rip it, drop it, 
any of those bad, bad things. And then um, when you get back to your seat, you're gonna close up your paint, put it back on the blue tray, and you may get a free draw paper to draw quietly at your seat if you have any time left. Remember to clean up when the timer goes off. And if you have any questions, you can feel free to ask the art teacher in training closest to you for some help.